great. Hi guys. Is anybody out there? Let me know. I want to make sure you guys can see and hear me before we get started. Make sure everything is good. All right. Let's see. Oh, I see a couple people on. Hi guys. Hi Sandra, how you doing? Can you hear me all right? Hi Carol, how are you? All right, looks like it is working. Hi Vanessa from South Africa, hello, welcome. I have my iPad set up right below my camera here so I'm just watching any comments come in and just adjusting as needed. All right. How is everybody doing? Hi, Tammy. Uh, yeah, all is well from the storm. We just got a little bit of rain and wind, but that was about it in our area. All right, awesome. Everything working good, guys? You can see me and hear me. I have a little bit different camera set up. I thought I'd try a slightly closer angle this time, and I'll just tilt my camera up and down as I need to switch views. So let me know what you guys think. Um, sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. I was having a uh, computer mouse issue for some reason. It wouldn't register my mouse, but we got it all put back together. We'll go ahead and get started here in just a second so that we have enough time for everything. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, write in the comments where you are watching from. Uh, that is always a ton of fun to see where everybody is and get to know each other. And we are going to start with our ice melt work in just a second here. I will show you, as everybody's jumping on, what we're going to make today. We have our splendid ice melt water lily. I'll try and tilt this so you guys can see what the lighting adjusts a little bit. So we have our ice melt water lily. I'm going to show you how to put this whole thing together and um, also how to paint it. We're going to be airbrushing today, which is super fun. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to airbrush specifically on ice melts, but just talking about airbrushing in general. It does have pink on it. I know that the lighting is a little bit washed out because I have it so bright in here to make sure you guys can see, but um, we're going to be doing it a pink and then the yellow center, of course. We're also going to be making this really fun um, water lily pad to rest it on. I don't have them attached just so I can hold it up a little bit easier, but they fit together perfectly. So yeah, that's what we're going to be making today. Super excited about that. Set these guys over here. All right, you guys ready to get started? All right, awesome. Hi, Rebecca. How are you doing today? All right, cool. So yeah, we will go ahead and jump right into it. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to this live stream. Um, I'm Sydney Galpern, for anybody that I don't know. I'm, I'm the owner of SeeMeCakes.com, and I invented Seemi Ice Melt, which is what we're using today. Um, and Ice Melt is by far my absolute favorite medium of anything that I work with because it's so versatile. There's so much you can do with it, and uh, it's just really, really fun. So I'm really excited to show you guys some fun techniques with this. We are making our Ice Melt Water Lily today, so this is 100% made out of Ice Melt. We're going to be doing uh, casting techniques for this entire piece, so it's going to make it super easy. But I'm also going to show you how to bring a lot of life into your cast ice melt pieces by um, taking them out while they're warm and bending them and adding shape and movement and just making them look really beautiful and lifelike. So that's the focus of the project today. Um, we are using our Simi Ice Melt tiles, of course, so I'll let the lighting adjust a little bit on those. Uh, that is our pre-cooked Simi Ice Melt tiles, so it's all ready to go. It's already in the hard candy form. Uh, remember that all ice melt starts out in in a powdered form, a granule that you do have to cook down according to a recipe. Um, that recipe is for free on my website if you're interested in learning how to cook it from scratch. But we're just going to be working with the pre-made um, ice melt tiles so that it is going to be completely ready to use. Um, you don't have to worry about temperatures or recipes or anything at this point. All you have to do is melt it down in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals. So um, if you guys got the accessory kit for this project, you will have some clear and you will have green. So if you're following along, make sure to let me know in the comments or if you're going to watch and then uh, do it afterwards. We did have the accessory kit for the specific molds and colors that we're using in this project available on my website and that's still up now too for the replay afterwards. But um, 
let me know if you are following along and make sure to tag me in pictures afterwards because I love, love, love seeing you guys' work um, after all of these demos and classes. It's super fun. Um, so yeah, we're going to be starting out with the pre-colored, but I'll talk about coloring as we go into it. Uh, remember that ice melt is very hot, so you want to wear your gloves. Um, it's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit when you're going to be working with it, so around 150 degrees Celsius, and that is very, very hot. So uh, wear your gloves, a cotton glove, and then like a nitrile or latex glove layered on top of that. That double layer will buffer the heat from your hands really nicely and um, just keep everything nice and clean. And um, I do recommend wearing those gloves. Don't follow my bad example because I'm not wearing gloves, only because I've been doing this for a very long time, around 14 years, and my hands just don't feel the heat anymore. So it's easier for me to show you guys things in more detail without them. But I do recommend wearing those gloves. Um, if you're intimidated by ice melt, remember that you're used to working with heat. If you bake, if you cook, you use stoves, you use ovens all the time. So don't be intimidated. It just takes some practice to build your confidence with it. And of course, wearing those gloves is going to keep your hands nice and protected. Um, so yeah, uh, we're just using the microwave today, but you can also use the stove top if you prefer to melt down your ice melt. Just start it at low and slowly bring the temperature up until it comes to a boil. Again, I don't go by specific temperatures. I just go by texture. So all you have to do at this point is melt it down until it's a liquid. Remember, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to write them in the comments, and um, I'll keep an eye on it. I have my iPad set up here, and my mom, Michelle, is here as well, um, Hi, and she'll be, <laughs> she'll be keeping a track of all of the comments and everything and making sure I don't miss anything. So uh, let me know if you have any questions throughout the entire thing, and if you're watching the replay of this, you are always welcome to uh, message me as well right here on my personal page or on my Instagram or anywhere else, and I'll be happy to answer any ice melt questions that you have. Um, so yeah, I'm going to tilt my camera down now so you guys can see my work surface get it adjusted here perfect and then I have my ice melt preheating in the microwave let me just pop that in for probably another 30 seconds to get it to a nice boil so again this is what we are using those nice ice melt tiles if you got it in the accessory kit like I was saying then you will have it already pre-colored but if you want to color the ice melt yourself you can use a edible airbrush color so that's going to be a water or a, uh, a water or alcohol based color a liquid um, you can also use powdered colors if you want to to create more of an opaque finish I'm going to be talking a little bit about that once we get into the clear but um, the airbrush colors are going to give you that transparent finish where powdered colors are going to be a little bit more opaque. Um, so it, just make sure that you're not mixing in gel color because gel color will break down the ice melt and it will not allow it to dry properly. So the gel paste colors for fondant are good for fondant but uh, not good for mixing into ice melt. Make sure it is an airbrush color or a powdered color. Grab my ice melt from the microwave here. So again, I'm just using the pre-colored green, that beautiful deep green that we will use for our lily pad first. Set that off to the side. Remember, whenever you're casting ice melt, you want to bring it to a nice boil to get any air that's mixed in out. So I bring it to a nice rolling boil, which it was just a second ago before I took it out. And then I'm going to let it settle. So it's always good to put it off to the side and just let it settle um, and let it come to a complete flat texture so it's not actively boiling and bubbling. Because if it's bubbling and you pour it in a mold, you're just pouring bubbles into your piece. Uh, Bev says, can you use poppy paint on ice melt, or is that color overkill? Um, I believe you can use poppy paint on ice melt. Uh, I wouldn't mix it into the ice melt because it's more for painting on top, but it works beautifully to paint it on. Because ice melt doesn't absorb color, if, it's ever, if you're ever using a paint and it's not really giving you an opaque or a solid color, it's being a little streaky, that's normal. You just may have to do a couple layers. So depending on the viscosity and the opacity of the color, you just may have to do a few layers. But poppy paint should work fine. So uh, we're going to be pouring our water lily first. So this is our beautiful semi silicone water lily mold. And um, this is what we're going to be pouring. So I'm just going to fill in the mold completely with the ice melt. Now that it is totally flat, so you see how it's not actively boiling and bubbling anymore, but it is still quite liquid. So it's going to be easy to pour. So I'm just going to pour that right into the mold very slowly. And then I can tilt it around a little bit to help spread it in so I don't accidentally pour it too thick. Sandra wants to know if you will be saving the video. Yes, this video will be available here on my page um, indefinitely afterwards, and then I also do upload all of my past live streams to my YouTube channel. So to make it a little bit easier to find, I have a whole playlist on there. You can just go to my channel, and I upload every single one within the few days after the live. So this will be up uh, probably today or tomorrow. It's under your name? Yeah, it's my YouTube channel. If you just search my name, Sydney Galpern, here, it will pop up. That's also where I have my whole ice melt basics series too. So if you're newer to ice melt, I have a whole series on just basics of ice melt from casting to pulling to boiling to estimating how much ice melt you'll need for a project. Um, so there's lots of useful tips and tricks on there too. 
Okay, so see how I just poured that in? And then I used a little silicone tool just to spread it into the cracks and crevices. You could also use a toothpick or a skewer or a cookie scribe if you want to, but I like the silicone tool because it is silicone, so it holds up really well to the heat. Now, if there's any little um, bubbles maybe tumbled in from pouring, I'm just going to lightly torch those away just like that because again hot air rises so any bubbles that maybe got caught in there will rise to the surface after you pour it and you can just torch those and now I'll let that sit we're just gonna let it cool for probably around I would say 10 minutes or so 10 to 15 minutes depending on your temperature of your room so we'll just put that guy off to the side and get ready to pour our next piece all right so we're done with the green I'm gonna pop my clear into the microwave now you can mellow as much of the clear as you can at once. If you don't have a big enough bowl, that's okay because you can just add more as you run out. So just keep adding and heating more as you need it. But next we're gonna pour the center of our water lily and we're gonna pour the petals as well. Um, and also the center disc that we're gonna use for attaching. So this is our water lily kit. So it has two molds to it, but you can see there's lots of different cavities to create this entire water lily. This is all we're gonna use to create that entire water lily. Um, now with this project, if you are following along, you may want to um, watch first and then once you, since you have all your tools and everything ready you can start but I'm gonna be jumping around a little bit differently than I would be making this in real life if I was just going ahead and making it and not explaining it just for timing sake and also because there is a lot of waiting time with this project since um, we have two leaf or um, excuse me petals on this mold but we're gonna need 15 total petals so it is gonna take a little bit of drying time uh, I'm gonna be showing you some that I have already pre-made but I'm gonna show you every single step on how to, I got to that point with these ones that I'm making but um, if you are going to be using this project and making this project I would probably recommend watching first and then going back and just kind of making more and more petals as you go or you can start with making the petals and then as they're cooling you can watch the next steps to know what to do next all right we're gonna start with the center because the center is gonna take the longest to cool all right so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to uh, fill that in to the mold. So I'm just making sure this is just like a little sphere mold that has a flatter base to it. Um, it's smaller than the sphere molds that we have on our website. So it fits perfectly uh, as the center and we're going to cover it in some stamens as well. But it does have a little bit of a more flat base because it will sit really nicely on the center supports that we have here. So I'm just going to be filling that all the way up like that and then just letting that cool. Just to help it time-wise, I'm going to go ahead and put my little battery-operated fan on it off to the side here. All right, and we'll just let that guy cool off. Now we are going to be pouring our uh, petals and our center support disc. So it's for the center support disc, we are going to um, pour that guy, oh actually let's pour the petals first so we can tilt them a little bit since they are um, different shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour these in, but remember that these are petals, you don't want them to be too chunky, you want them to be a little bit more delicate. So what I like to do is I start at one end, so I kind of fill up from the top down. I fill maybe half to two thirds of the way into the mold and I'll do that on both so I can do them at the same time and then I'll just carefully tilt the mold to spread it and that's just going to help it to get a little bit thinner and not be too bulky and chunky so I'll use my silicone tool again on a clean side or you can use your toothpick to help and then I'll spread it back into the point here at the top it's okay if you get any rough edges or anything because those are going to be very easy to clean up afterwards all right, so I'm just filling those in, and now I will let those cool. Um, if I have little spots that maybe didn't quite fill, I'm going to just take a little bit on my tool and just drip it into the mold there. All right, just because this has really beautiful deep ridges in it for a little bit of texture, we want to make sure that no spaces are left unfilled. And again, it's easy to clean up the rough edges, so if I do overflow it by doing this, I'm really not wor too worried about that. All right, and then next what we're gonna do is fill in that center disc. So the center disc is what everything is going to attach onto. Okay, so I just fill that one all the way up to get a nice strong base. And then we're going to be doing a combination of tucking some of the petals under the disc, setting some up against the disc, and some of them on top of the disc, depending on the layers that we're going to be attaching. Um, now, if you get any little bubbles, like I don't know if you guys can see, I have a tiny little bubble off to the side here. I'm just going to lightly torch those before it sets up, and that will just 
uh, allow everything to fill back over after any bubbles pop since it's nice and liquid. And now the center disc we want to leave to cool completely, so we want to make sure that that is going to be all nice and solid and strong to attach everything to. But the petals, we are actually going to unmold those before they are too um, cool. Because if we f um, let those cool completely, they would just be flat, right? Which is not really the water lily or lotus look. Um, we want those to bend a little bit. So we're actually going to unmold those slightly early. And the reason for that is we do want to add a slight bend to them. And so we're going to, instead of letting them cool all the way, which would take approximately maybe 8 to 10 minutes, we're going to take these out a tiny bit early so they're still warm. That way we can bend them. So maybe around 5 minutes or so. Um, now you do, it does take a little bit of practice and um, practice with your specific mold too to know how much time you should wait before you take it out. You don't want to do it too early because if you do it too early then the um, pieces are going to either stick to the mold, maybe they're going to stretch or warp or lose their definition. Um, then that would, you know, obviously not hold a lot of the shape and you want them to be a little bit more consistent than that. But if you wait too long, of course, they're going to get too hard and they could crack when you're bending them. So it will just depend on the temperature of your room. It'll depend how hot the ice melt was when you poured it in and it will depend on how deep the mold is as well because the deeper it is, the more heat it will hold. So I just want to practice. I've made this a bunch of times already so I kind of know how long I'm going to wait, but it will take some trial and error with your specific mold because you can do this with so many many different things. You can use it with flowers, of course, and like maybe the full shaped flowers, that's the whole flower in one. You can cup them or add movement. Um, you can do this with leaves is especially nice, or maybe you have a feather mold or something like that. It really adds a whole nother level of life to your pieces because ice melt is a rigid material. It dries completely hard, almost like glass. And so what can happen sometimes is things can look a little bit too rigid. They can look a little bit too stagnant. And so bringing life into your piece is very important important with things like this because you want them to have that really light, airy movement that the water lily or the lotus is so known for, um, but you want to bring that into a material that is rigid. So it's just about finding those things that you can do to bring that into your piece. Okay, so I'm going to set that guy off to the side. How are you guys doing? Anybody got questions? Let's see. Uh, Bev says, can you use the small sphere mold you showed to make bubbles for a cake? Yeah, absolutely. You can fill that in and use them as spheres. They do, like I said, it's a little bit smaller than our small sphere, I believe, um, of the mold, the two-part mold we have online. And it has a slightly flatter bottom, which can be really nice so that it sticks down to things really, really flush and you have a lot of surface area to work with. So you definitely could use this sphere just as is. Um, you can leave it and um, you know you could do it hollow by filling and draining it you can do it solid and then torch it clear you could even do the air casting techniques that I've showed um, in some of my classes where you actually blow into the mold so uh, there's lots of things that you can do with that mold other than that um, and that's always important too right is to find different uses for your mold so even the petal shapes you can use those in green for leaves if you wanted to you can use them as feathers maybe if you heat and trim the ends a little bit to fray them I think they would make really pretty abstract feather shapes uh, there is just so many things that you can use these specific shapes for and that's really important just to kind of have that um, basis of knowledge. Uh, I'm going to pop a little um, bowl of clear in the microwave because I want to show you how we're going to do our center stamens in a minute on the opposite sides of that mold but I want a slightly smaller bowl because it is going to be very very tiny and a smaller bowl is going to be easier so I'm just going to pop that in for 30 seconds or so while we're letting everything cool. Um, let's see, Maritza asked, does humidity affect the ice melt too? Yes, humidity can affect the ice melt. It's not going to be as bad as traditional boiled sugar, um, but ice melt still is hydroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture from the air. And the longer you leave it out, the more and more moisture it will absorb. So my trick is going to be spraying it with a clear edible glaze as soon as possible. So as soon as all the pieces go together, it's all painted and done, uh, I spray it with this clear edible glaze spray, and that is just going to make sure that it is all um, going to lock out the moisture and humidity. It will keep any stickiness away and it will keep it from getting cloudy as well so this is really going to be your key that's my little secret weapon that's okay connections are weird <laughs> sometimes i have to scroll like to the left and then to the right again to get the comments to come back all right, so we are just waiting for some of our pieces to cool and melting our ice melt. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention is on the supply list for this project, um, which I had put out with the um, announcement of it, or uh, I have it on the website too, 
um, you can add a little bit of pearl dust into this uh, ice malt, into the clear ice malt before you pour your petals. What that's going to do is add a slight opacity to it because the water lilies are generally going to be, I mean they come in different colors, but to give you a nice like intense um, kind of base to paint on top of, uh, generally they're going to be white. But because this is isomalt, I still wanted some of that really pretty transparency that I thought just added a lot of, uh, a, like a glass look to the piece. So I added a little bit, or you can add a little bit of pearl dust into the piece. That's what I did with the original one, so I'll hold that up again so you guys can see. So you can see this one is slightly more opaque. It's still a little bit see-through but it is definitely more solid looking than the finished petals that we're going to have that I have a pre-made one here. So I'm going to do both so you can see the contrast of having either just clear as is or mixing in a little bit of pearl dust into the ice malt before you pour everything. But that is an option if you want your piece to pop a little bit more. It kind of depends on what you're doing. If it's just going to be sitting on a very nice white base, then you know the clear would still look nice, but if it's going to be like on a dark base or on a textured or patterned base, sometimes clear can get a little bit lost. Alright, so I just brought that little bowl to a boil. Those pieces are not quite ready to come out, but they should be in a minute. Actually, yeah, these pieces are ready. Let's take those out before we pour those so that we don't have to move around after we pour. Um, so you can see that these are ready to come out, but they're still a little bit flexible. I'm going to set them off to the side. Uh, actually, this has to settle for a second, so we'll bend those first. How about that? So you see, they just fell right out. They do have some rough edges on them, if you can see. Um, like right around here, it's a little bit rough. So I'm going to put these face down on my mat first and just lightly torch around the edges to smooth those. I put them face down so it protects the detail. And that way I don't melt away any of those beautiful ridges. You have those about 10 seconds or so to dry. If you really overflowed or you had like a shape that you need to fix, you can do that now with gloved hands or even trim it with scissors if you needed to. And then if you can just go ahead and bend it, that's great, but sometimes the edges can cool faster than the center. So even though the center feels like it will bend, the edges are still a little bit rigid. So what I'll do is I will just now torch on the textured side very, li very lightly, mostly focusing around the edges, and just build up a little bit more heat to make it more pliable, and that way when we do bend it, it is going to keep it all um, nice and consistent and we don't have any parts snapping. There we go. See how that's nice and flexible now? I'm making the inner um, petals for this uh, tightest most layer around the center, so I'm really going to curl these pretty drastically. You can see I have a really nice C shape, and I'll let that cool on its side to maintain the shape, or you can put it in like an apple crate or something to get that really nice shape to it. All right. And I'll just let those cool. Um, with the others, we are going to um, curl them a little bit less, and I'll show you that in just a second. Once we pour our center stamens, I'll show you the amounts that I curled each layer. But we'll just go ahead and let those cool in front of the fan for a minute. All right, so now before my ice melt sets up too much, we're just going to pour these little stamens. They are very tiny, so it might take a little bit of practice to get them to fill in nicely. Okay, just like that. Pour towards me is going to be a little bit easier. And again, if you overflow, the best part about ice melt is it can be remelted as many times as you need. So it's okay if you do pour a little bit too much and you have to throw it back in the bowl and start again. Just takes practice. But I will say, the more liquid the ice melt is, the easier it will be. And the smaller bowl you have, the easier that will be as well. I think the new um, super flexible ones yeah, yeah, definitely. The taller um, bowl that I was using for the green, those are really, really flexible. And even though they are larger than something like this, I honestly find that they are really easy to pour tiny details because you can really pinch them into a very small pour spout. So if you don't have a small bowl like this, you can definitely use those that are on our website, the measuring cup ones. Okay, so those will only take probably about two or three minutes to cool to that in-between stage where we can cover our center. So let's see, is our center ready to unmold? Almost. So I'll talk about the petals first before we unmold everything. Okay, so here are my petals. They all cooled, the ones that I just pulled out here. Um, and I'm going to show you one of each because I have some pre-made already over here. 
So uh, we're going to cut these a little bit just to help with the bend and the shape, but I want to show you the difference. So uh, there's 15 petals total for my water lily. That's what I find looks the best. Um, the first five are going to go on the outside, the second five are going to go in the middle, and then five more are going to go right up against the center. And so the first five, you can see I did not curl them very much. I left them completely long uh, and intact, and I only added a very, very, very subtle bend to them. The next layer is going to be the middle layer, and I added a little bit more of a bend, okay? They don't all have to be perfect, but I do just kind of aim for this. And then when we go for the smallest most uh, layer, we're going to make those really bent. So this is the outermost, the least bent, compared to the very tightest bend, and this one is the middle, which is not that different from this one, but a little bit. So five of them are going to be really curled, five medium, and then five that are almost completely flat with just a slight bend in them. And I'll show you how to cut those as well in just a second. Let me put these back all over here. Remember which one is which. <laughs> these two need to be cut. This one can go back. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and unmold our sphere. So just take off that rubber band and it should just come right out like that. Okay, so just a nice dome. It's a little bit cloudy just because silicone can collect bubbles. You're not going to see any of this center dome, but if you were going to see it, like Bev was talking about before, um, you can definitely torch over it to get rid of those bubbles, and you see how shiny and glassy that got. Okay, that will also help everything to stick to it once we start attaching. So I'm going to take these little pieces out now. The center disc is probably ready to come out too, but I'll just leave them in there for now. These do cool really quick, so I find it's just easiest to reheat them. If you can take them out a little early, that's best to catch them when they're warm. But um, I usually do always reheat these just because they're so tiny. They don't take very long to cool, and I usually get distracted. So I heat a little bit over it, give it about 5 or 10 seconds, and then I flipped them over and I'm heating the back because the torch only heats the surface, so I just want to make sure that it is all going to be evenly heated. And then after I do the front and back, I'll pick it up and bend it so I can feel that it is bending. I'll heat a little bit on the sphere and I wrap it around the side like that. So I just start at the bottom and I want to meet it to the center and go up. Okay, see that? So I go right to the center and I find when you're covering this, instead of going next to each other and just wrapping all the way around, um, to keep the center very centered, if you will, uh, it's easiest to go opposites of each other and fill it in. So I'm going to go right across from the one I just put on and meet them in the middle like that. See that? It looks kind of funky right now, but once you go all the way around, so then I would split this in half, so I'd put one here and make like a plus sign, and then I'd split those in half, and I would continue filling that in. And again, that's just because when you go all the way around consecutively, sometimes you may not reach the center all the way, and it can look a little bit funky. So just to make sure it stays even, I like to just match it across from each other. And then I have one pre-made, so you guys don't have to w watch me fill this whole thing up, because it does take a few minutes. So um, this is what it's going to look like in the end. So you can see I have all the pieces wrapped around here. I might have cut a few of them a little bit shorter just to add some variation to the stamens at the top, but that's what it'll look like once it's all covered up. That's really cool looking. Thank you. <laughs> Said, uh, Ingrid says she's new to Art Small. Do you have a sunflower mold and a video? Um, yes, we have a, like a Gerber daisy mold that's really, really pretty, and I use that one for sunflowers because it's a very similar look. I actually just filmed a tutorial of it um, that will be coming out in the next couple weeks, so we'll have the tutorial up um, probably for one of my Tutorial Tuesday videos. Um, but yeah, we have one on our website. It's behind your head. Is it? Oh yeah, I do have it behind my head. Let me see. I can actually tilt this up and show you if you want. It is that one right there. <laughs> you see that? So I just painted it with um, sunflower colors instead of doing it, you know, traditional like pinks and oranges for Gerber daisies. All right. And we have tiny ones too, I think. Yeah, we have itty bitty ones too, which are really cute for like cookies and stuff. Okay, so there is our center. Uh, now I'm going to show you cutting the petals. So cutting the petals is going to be... Uh, really, really easy. It's actually easier than you might think to cut pieces that are already hardened, as long as they're thin like this, because these are not super dense or super thick, they're going to cut through really easily. So um, if you get this um, mold kit for the water lily, it does come with an instruction sheet. So all of this, this video will be up, but all of this is written down, the exact sizes and things that I do. Uh, but what we're going to do is, like I said, the outermost five petals we're going to leave. So we're just going to leave them completely full. Okay, so I'll bring those in so that we can see those for contrast since we're about to put it together. So I have these five already made. 
Then the next five are going to be about a half of an inch cut off. So see how I cut off about a half inch from the bottom? Hold up to a full one just for comparison. It doesn't matter so much how much you cut off, but it matters that it's around the same amount for every single one in that row. So even if you do a little bit more or less, just make sure that they are consistent for all five so that they all stick out about the same amount. And that will help it to just look a little bit cleaner and a little bit more put together and not quite so all over the place like it was blown around in a storm. <laughs> all right. And then finally, the last set is going to be the um, tightest curled petals. Those are going to have around an inch cut off. So just to show you in comparison to the ones that are left, I'm going to cut off around an inch or so from the bottom. So you see how all the lines point to one spot at the base. I just cut off to where about the V starts. So where uh, these lines end right about there, I'll just cut an inch or so off. So I'll show you that with these. I have three pre-cut here and then these will be my final two. So what we're going to do is just torch where we want to cut. I'm going to hold this up, but always set it down and torch. Don't hold things in your hand. I'm only doing this so you guys can see a little bit closer up. Um, but you don't want to accidentally torch you. So you just want to torch on the front and back where you want to cut. You'll see you lose your detail a little bit. That's okay. Wait about 10 seconds for that heat to sink in all the way. And then you just cut. Just like that. Even if it cracks a little bit at the base, it's not really a big deal because you're not going to see any of that. You just cut that right off. These little pieces can be thrown back in a bowl and remelted to a liquid and used again, so there's no waste. And I'm just doing this by eye, but you can absolutely use a measuring tool or measure it from the last one you did so that they're all consistent. All right, you wanna try and cut a straight line. I'm really bad at straight lines, but you wanna try to just so that they sit nicely. So again, we have 15 petals total. Uh, five are left as is and just slightly bent. The next five are curled and bent slightly more and about a half an inch is cut off the bottom. And then the last five are very, very curled and they are going to have around an inch cut off of the bottom here. All right. We also have our center that's already pre-done for us and now I will pop out that center attachment disc that's going to hold everything together and that is going to be what we start to put everything on. All right. So let's set some of these off to the side. We're going to start with our biggest petals and work our way up from there. I'm just keeping my group separated so I remember which one is which. All right, so we're gonna put our center disc right in the middle and we're gonna arrange these just so we have an idea of where they're gonna attach so they're evenly spaced. All right, like that. Now we're gonna attach this first five underneath the center disc. So if you actually want to just kind of push these more together so that they almost touch in the middle, I just hold my disc and kind of press it down on it to make sure they're all going to be attached enough. If I see that one's not really pushed in all the way to give me a nice solid base, I'll just push them in more. All right, and then all we're gonna do is we are going to lightly torch the disc, but not really too much. It's only because warm to warm sticks better than warm to cool, but since we have to pick this piece up, you don't want it too hot, otherwise you can't pick it up. But these pieces we don't have to pick up, so I'm gonna really, really heat those until they're almost bubbling. Okay, attach that right down, pushing all the way down to the mat, and then I have a second to adjust these if they don't look quite even enough. Okay, and I'll give that a second to set up before we start adding more. All right. What I'm gonna do before I start adding more and more petals is I'm gonna make sure after this is cooled that it is released from the mat because it's easier to pick up now than it will be once all the petals are on if you have to kind of pull on it a little bit. You don't wanna risk breaking anything. Right. Okay, so next are going to be our medium petals, so the ones that have a half inch cut off and are slightly bent. Okay, these are going to go in between the previous, so they're going to go catty corner kind of in between the first layer. And instead of going underneath the disc, they are going to meet right up to the edge of the disc. So they're not on top, they're not underneath, they're just meeting right up to the edge of the disc. So I'll just heat a little bit on both and just slide it up to it. You may need a couple little props and things to hold them in place as you go. And again, they don't all have to be perfect. 
because this is nature, so if one of them is opened more or less, it is okay. Okay, I'm going to grab a couple rolling pins here just to help me with propping. I find rolling pins are a good size, and I did angle these up more, so it's not quite so flat as it was before, where the first ones are more um, like an open palm or maybe like a dinner plate. These ones are pointed more up towards the sky. And then our last set here. Elaine can't wait to wave make hers this weekend. Yay! I can't wait to see it, Elaine. The team is good. So clear. Thank you. Yeah, that this is the clear one. So like I said, the other one I did put a little bit of pearl dust in because I wanted to show you the contrast of how they're going to look differently depending on what you add into it. And of course, if you wanted it to look really, really opaque like porcelain, you can... Um, add white petal dust and make it super solid so it looks like a shiny porcelain water lily which I think would be beautiful especially with the airbrushing on top of it. Okay, so before I uh, start on adding even more heat for the next ones I'm going to just use my fan for a second and just wait. Now you can also add um, liquid isomalt as a glue instead of torching to stick. If you feel more comfortable with that, you can just dip the petal in liquid isomalt and stick it on. I find that that can cause drips and things, and since none of these pieces are really that heavy, I don't need to add the extra glue. I can just use the isomalt as is and torch it, but just kind of play around with it. You'll find what you what works best for you. I usually only use li liquid isomalt if it's something that I really, really, really want to secure on, if it's a really heavy piece or a really gravity-defying piece. Okay. They're mostly stuck on there, but I'm going to leave the supports there just for a second to make sure. And then before we add the final layer of the um, petals that are curled the most and cut off the most, so about an inch is cut off there, we're going to add on the center. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to torch a little on the disc, a little on the underneath of the center, and try and get it centered. So Delane has a good question. Yes. Uh, where can she get one of the little fans? Uh, the little fan, I found them on Amazon. You can also get it on, uh, at Walmart, uh, at least here, because we have them, especially right now for hurricane season. Um, they're just little battery-operated fans. I think the brand of this one is Treva. You can see it there, T-R-E-V-A. But I found them on Amazon. They have different sizes. There's a slightly bigger battery-operated one, but I like this because I can lift it and move it around easy to any angle I need. And the one that yeah, the one that clips on is really nice, too, because you can add some height to it and, like, clip it to your cabinet or something, and you can get pieces a lot higher and uh, angle it differently and not have to hold it. They have ones that are, like, on a clamp. Okay. And then the final row is going to go in between the second row, so it's actually going to line up perfectly with the very first row, if that makes sense. Um, so it's lining up with that first open row that we put down, going in between the second row petals, and that's going to go on top of the disc, but tucked right up underneath the center of the flower. Now, because this is a straight line and the center is round, it may not fit flush up against it right now, but once you heat this, it'll create kind of like a soft material at the end, and you can just form it and smush it, for lack of a better term, to fit right up against that center um, so it rounds it off a little bit. Okay. So I just tuck that right in, and then I kind of hold them in place while I attach each one. You may have to overlap them slightly depending on how much you cut off if they don't fit along. I'm going to move, well, I'll probably just hold these with the fan because I don't want to risk putting a prop down and accidentally breaking one of my previous petals off. So if I see, notice them falling down after a second, I'll just push them back up. If your pieces don't stick enough, you may have to heat a little bit more or try heating both pieces because, again, warm to warm sticks better. Especially right now, it's been so humid because we did just have um, a little bit of the hurricane that came through, so it's been raining a lot. And sometimes you need to add a little bit of extra glue or extra heat to make things really, really stick on. Okay. I know it looks a little funky right now from the top, but I'll hold this up from the side so you can see it in a minute. But I'm just going to support these. Now you can really close these if you want it to look like the lotus is just opening, or you can leave them open a little bit to see the center. That's usually what I do since we put all that work into making all those stamens for the center. So you want to make sure that you can see it all. I'm going to move my props so that they get air up and under them too. And we'll just... 
be patient for a second and let this all set up before we pick it up. So next we're going to unmold our water lily pad and I'm going to show you painting this. So we're going to uh, be airbrushing today, but you can also use different edible paints. Uh, you guys know lots of different edible paints work with isomalt, so it can be pretty much anything sticky. You can use uh, luster dust dry or wet. You can use petal dust that's wet, but you can't use it dry because it is not sticky. So it won't really stick to the isomalt. You have to mix it with alcohol or piping gel or something to get it to stick. Uh, you can also airbrush it, which is what I'm going to be doing. And, or you can use the airbrush paints uh, on a paintbrush and paint them a little bit more artistically with like some brush strokes to make it pretty or you can use gel colors diluted um, remember you can't mix gel colors in but you can paint them on top really nicely I use the dilution solution from artisan accents that we carry and that does really well to thin out your gel colors and make them paints all right there we go so it feels pretty solid and I'm just going to make sure I hold it by the center because I feel like that's the strongest point once I need to get my fingers up and under it if any petals do break off, it's very easy to just torch them back on, so no stress. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So you can see by staggering the petals and doing some of them more curved toward the inside and then the outside ones flatter, it just really gives you a beautiful finish. Okay, I'm going to set that guy off to the side for just a second while we unmold our lily pad. Okay, so here's our lily pad. We're just going to pop that out. And then this guy does have a lot of beautiful texture, but sometimes it can get lost because, again, it is transparent. So you can just dry dust with some petal dust if you want to. You can torch it a little bit just to get away any of the matteness, and that can help it to be a little bit shinier as well. And, of course, you can go back and paint this more, too, if you really want to highlight the indents. But I find just adding that little bit of shininess really does help. Isn't that beautiful? They love it, Sarah. Yay, I'm so glad! All right, so our final step before we would use the edible glaze spray on it is going to be painting. So I'm going to put out some paper towels so I don't spray everything. We're pretty, con we're being pretty concentrated with this spray, so I'm not going to use an airbrush booth or anything, which I do usually use. But hopefully, I won't spray it on you guys. So <laughs> we will see what happens. Okay, just put that right there. And I have my airbrush out here, so I am using, let's see if the cord will reach. I'm going to unplug it for a second so I can show you guys the airbrush I'm using. Okay. Uh, this is the Dinky Doodle airbrush. This is my absolute favorite airbrush to use um, for any airbrushing because it has a really wide range of uh, spray levels, so you can go really wide to really detailed. This is the one that we carry in our shop and that I use for every single thing that I spray. So you can see it has a nice dual action gun here, and um, that's what I'm going to be using. So I turn on my airbrush once it's plugged in. I'm going to turn it on, and I am going to turn it lower, so it has a plus and a minus here to make the compressor stronger or a little bit softer for bigger or smaller projects. I want it a little bit smaller just so I don't overspray everywhere, so I'm going to turn it on and then just uh, turn it down a few until it's at the lowest setting. I have to put the compressor on my back table though because it's the cord is not long enough. All right. And I'm going to grab my airbrush colors. So I'm using a canary yellow and a nice bright pink. I think this is electric pink. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and probably do... Let's do the yellow first so we can go in a little bit closer. So I'll just put a couple drops in there. Always test off to the side your airbrush first. Make sure it's coming out nicely. It's not spitting or anything. And this is really going to catch all of the beautiful detail. So I'm going to go very, very light with this. I'm not doing too much at once. because so you can always add more, but you can't take it away. The key with airbrushing on isomalt is that it is not, um, it's not porous like fondant and gum paste, so it doesn't take as much color at once without beating up. So you have to do very light layers, letting them dry in between. You can see that it's starting to turn yellow on the petals. That's actually just the light reflection. I'm not getting any paint on the petals, but that's the light reflection from how isomalt reflects light. So once we put the pink on, that will take it away. But I'm just kind of going around. Just very, very, I'm barely even pulling back on the trigger, and you see how fast and easy that is to get a nice bright yellow center. Okay. I'll let that dry for a second, and I'll hold it up so you guys can see. Now I've got to be gentle, so since I can't pick it up by the center. See that? So 
so I just sprayed a little bit. And the nice part about the airbrush is you can be so soft. You can get really beautiful ombres, which is how I'm going to do the pink. Because I don't want to, you could spray paint the whole thing pink, but I want to just do an ombre effect where it starts out uh, white towards the center and then it turns pink as you go in. So I just ran the excess color off onto my paper towel and I'll add the pink straight in. You can clean it out between, but these colors are just going to run right together since yellow goes to pink really nicely. Okay, so I'm just testing it off to the side here, make sure it all looks good. And then I will just go very lightly on the tips of the water lily. And again, you could do more or less depending on how pink you want, or you can do different colors. It's your water lily. You could do it purple, you can do it green. They come in so many colors. Yeah, they do come in so many colors and varieties. You can leave them white if you want, but I just love how the pink really pops. And the nice part about ice melt is you can spray paint on the front or on the back and you'll see through it. I usually do both. I do the front and the backs just to make sure that it's really intense without having to beat up too much color on the surface, which is kind of fun. So just letting it dry for a few, a uh, minute or so in between. So I'm just rotating which pieces I do here. And if I wanted to make that more intense, I could definitely wait a few extra minutes and go back and do more, but I kind of want it to be a little bit softer. And it's a little bit hard to see exactly where I'm airbrushing on this, or see where it is on the piece now, because it's overspraying on the paper towel, but I'll move that away in just a sec so you can really see it. But I'm just doing tiny, tiny, tiny bits all the way around. Airbrushing is one of my absolute favorite painting techniques. It is just so easy and fast, and you can get such natural looks with this. You can blend colors really nicely. All right. That looks good to me. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my airbrush now and move all of my messy stuff away. Let's see if I can pick this up. So the last step, of course, would be spraying it with that clear edible glaze spray so that you can seal it and make sure that there's no uh, moisture or humidity or anything getting to it. But look how beautiful that is. I'm going to try and hold it with the white background. I'll hold it up here in a second when I tilt my camera back up. But you can really see on the white just how pretty that ombre is with those colors. And as long as you just do little bits at a time, it won't beat up. So just kind of be cautious with it until you get a feel for it. We have our beautiful lily pad that we could attach it onto if we wanted, or we can just set it onto the top of the cake. You could, of course, pour like a six inch cake pan that's been greased or a flex form uh, pool to put this on. You could do a beautiful blue and, you know, use that as a cake topper, or you can put lily pads around this and put like little cupcakes or chocolates would be super cute on each of their individual uh, lily pads. There's just so much that you can do with it. You can also airbrush or dry dust a little bit of pearl dust on this as well if you did decide you wanted some opacity to it and didn't want it as clear, um, but that's totally individual preference. All right, I'm going to tilt this up so I can show you guys how it looks from the front. Hello again. Tilt this down a little bit, make sure you guys are at a good angle. All right, so there is our finished water lily. Ta-da! So it's nice and strong. It's all made out of ice melt. There's no non-edible supports in that. And I'll hold it up next to the finished one too with the petal dust or the luster dust in it so that you can see the difference. I did not airbrush this one uh, with the luster dust as much as this one. As you can see, it's a little bit more subtle of a pink, but this one would definitely pop better on a textured background because you can see that the clear could get lost a little bit if it has things going on behind it where the more opaque one stands out a lot brighter. So it just depends on the background of uh, the piece that you're making and whatever you're going to do with it. Oh, they love it. They love it. What do you guys think? Bev thinks uh, chocolate frogs on a lily pad. Oh, that would be so cute. Little like filled chocolate frogs. Oh my god. Adorable. <laughs> oh, lots of hearts, lots of hearts. Yay! Awesome! Do you guys have any final questions? All right, before I go, I do want to show you guys a little sneak peek of our next live stream because I always like to give you guys a sneak peek. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to um, share a little slide for you guys um, just about some of our upcoming events that we have. Um, so I ju did just announce... Ooh. 
change. Um, I did just announce my next Zoom workshop, so that one is actually on Zoom, so we can interact, we can work alongside each other, and that is going to be the Isomalt Terrarium. This is all Isomalt, and we're going to be doing some really pretty layered sand, uh, hand sculpting all these different varieties of succulents from aloe to the big thick succulents to more like, um, like air plants. I have a whole bunch of different ones that I'm going to show you guys. That one is on Sunday, July 25th, and uh, it does have the accessory kit that goes with it, or you can use what you have. I'm going to show you that in person because I have the pieces here, and I just want to show you how cool it looks. Let me grab that. So this is the actual piece from the picture that we're going to be making. So you can see the layered sand underneath and all of the fun succulents inside. Uh, so we're going to be learning how to make all of those and all the painting techniques, some crimping techniques for the aloe. It's going to be super duper fun. So um, that one is a Zoom workshop, so it's a little bit different than this. You have to sign up on my website in order to secure your seat. And then um, it's totally interactive. So you can ask questions. We'll see each other if you want. Or you can uh, also get a replay afterwards. So if you can't make that date, I film a tutorial tutorial of it afterwards, so you can always just watch the tutorial that goes along with it. Um, either way, but that's available now on my website. Um, and then, let's see, before I show you guys the next um, piece, I just wanted to make sure you guys know about our awesome guest demonstrators for the See Me Torch team this month. They are absolutely incredible artists. We have um, a live demo every single week this month. So um, we have Brooke Taylor, who did her amazing demonstration last week. That one is up for replay. You can go back and watch. Um, and then this week was my demonstration of the water lily. And then we're also going to have Jared Altmark, Gene Shapwell, and Donald Joyner joining us the next next few Fridays so uh, and Saturdays oh, so yeah, the Saturdays. whole yeah we have a couple Saturdays too which is really fun so make sure that you uh, look on the see me torch team for the list and the times and dates of each one of those if you're not a part of the see me torch team make sure that you join because it is a totally free Facebook group um, where we post a whole bunch of fun content these exclusive live streams so these live streams will be exclusive to the torch team members which is so much fun um, so you will have exclusive access to those we also it's do just a free Facebook group. yeah it's just a free Facebook group so we also post like pictures of our work you can ask questions it's for all levels and we have such a fun time we do a monthly game night as well the next one is going to be a, a baking themed scavenger hunt on the 18th of July at 7 p.m. so that's a Sunday and uh, yeah we just have a great time there so make sure that you join that's totally free you can just search see me torch team and um, you will be able to see all of those and then drum roll please for the next live stream so this is a totally free live stream we are doing the floating ice malt jellyfish sculpture I cannot wait for this. This project was actually um, inspired by my amazing friend, Teresa Comfort. She um, gave me this idea for an isomalt jellyfish, and I think that isomalt just lends itself so perfectly to the look of jellyfish that I was just so inspired to create this next live stream piece. Um, so this one is going to be a Sunday this time on July, or excuse me, August 8th at 2 p.m. EST. So this is totally free. It's on Facebook, but we're actually doing something cool for this next live stream. Uh, we are going to be doing it on the Capital Confectioners Cake Club Day of Sharing. So they're having a virtual day of sharing. It's free. Anybody can watch it. I'll be sharing it here on my page so you can still watch. But they're doing an entire day of guest demonstrators and they asked me to be a part of it and to do this demonstration for them live. So um, you are welcome to watch this on my page. I will share it so you can see it here. But if you want access to all of those incredible uh, whole day of different artists doing demonstrations, make sure that you go and check that out. It's the Capital Confectioners Cake Club. Um, when I post this, I will post a link so that you can go and join on their group. And uh, they have just some really, really amazing demos that are going to be happening. So that's why it's on a Sunday instead of a Friday next month, um, because we're going to be doing it in combination with that. But you can just watch it here too. But it's totally free, all of these demos to watch, um, which is really amazing of them. And I cannot wait. Um, I do have the piece here too Yay. that I'll show you. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So I will hold it up here. It's actually really big. <laughs> so here is the jellyfish. Okay, so you can see we're going to be making the freeform base pieces. We're going to be making the uh, dome on top and then the hand-pulled tentacles. And we're going to be doing a little bit more uh, in-depth on airbrushing as well. So we're going to be doing some more 3D pieces and getting uh, shades and contrast and working with transparent versus opaque colors and things like that. So if you want to learn even more about airbrushing, uh, we will be doing some more. I've been all about airbrushing lately, and you guys will see a little bit why coming out very soon. Stay tuned. But uh, we're super excited about this one. It's going to be very, very fun.
so I hope to see you guys for that. Again, this, uh, that is a completely free live stream just like this, but if you are interested in following along with the project either during or afterwards, I do have the accessory kit live on my website right now, seamacakes.com. I have on this side a little um, uh, thing up here so you can see the spelling. Um, you can check that out. It is live right now to play along with that because I think uh, that one can be so much fun, especially if you do different colors, combinations, and things like that. Um, so I can't wait to see you guys' pieces. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any final questions, I'll be checking out the comments comments here. Remember, you can message me with any other questions, and if you guys recreate this project of this water lily today, or any of my past live stream projects, please, please make sure to tag me or post them in the Torch Team group because we love seeing each other's work. Uh, that makes it super fun to see your artistic interpretation. And uh, yeah, for anybody who tuned in late, this will be available so you can re-watch it here on my page. And I do upload all my past live streams onto my YouTube channel, which is just under my name, Sydney Galpern. You just search that and you can find my channel, which has my past live stream projects, as well as uh, all sorts of different tutorials in my See Me Basics series and all of that too. Uh, all right, yay! I cannot wait for the next one. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, looks good. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so glad that you uh, enjoyed. I hope that you learned a lot and I can't wait to see your ice melt water lilies. I know that they are gonna be beautiful. Um, so I will see you in my next live stream. If you have any questions, remember you can message me at any time. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody has a great weekend and see you next time. Keep life sweet. Bye guys.